in the United States, although uh, we think of it as a, a na one nation, uh, indivisible, there are in fact many little pockets of uh, different cultures, uh, regional variety. Uh, I view those pockets as being something like endangered species. I think the United States has something of an environmental problem with respect to its social environments. And it seems to me that uh, Puerto Rico, an island which has a very definite ethnic and cultural and linguistic identity, as a state would be entering even further than it already has entered into a great homogenizing process which uh, Puerto Ricans perhaps would reject if they reflected on what has happened to regional and cultural variety within the mainland United States. There is a, a, con a consciousness of the big differences between, um, uh, let's say, American, uh, let's say, English-based culture and the culture uh, of, of Puerto Rico. In other words, it, it is, its distinctness is, is, is recognized. But I see significant differences, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's differences in the culture, there's differences in the language, there's differences in, in, in the heritage. The point is, I... I I see Puerto Rico as more of a Latin country than I do. Uh, Senator Nichols. If Puerto Ricans wanted to preserve and develop their cultural identity, it seems to me that faced with the three options that are available to them, or that are theoretically available to them at the present time, commonwealth and statehood and uh, independence, it seems fairly clear that the symbolic value of independence is enormous. Uh, it might be that uh, after independence, economic relations between the United States and Puerto Rico would not be greatly changed. But it seems to me that that decision would represent a kind of affirmation of pride in one's own identity that can't be underestimated. If Puerto Rico were to become the 51st state, I think that it, in fact, would be would be subjected to all sorts of pressures that would begin to to undermine and to to wear away its cultural distinctness. There's a sensitivity to the to the uh, to the cultural uh, uh, history of Puerto Rico to to. Um the whole way of life in Puerto Rico and and, uh, and how it, can that be uh, preserved because it means so much to the people of Puerto Rico. So under each status, uh, there is an effort to uh, to try to preserve that. Uh, but uh, under certain statuses, of course, it's it's much easier than others. Uh, there's no Could question. Well, I'll, uh, there's no question that under independence, uh, it's not difficult at all because the people of Puerto Rico under a, uh, their, own, their own government, uh, they, they would preserve their culture. Uh, but uh, under each of the others, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is a little more difficult. We see right now what is happening, for example, in French-speaking Canada. They, they have tried now for many years to, to arrive at some sort of a, a, of, a, of, a, of a system in which they can maintain their cultural uniqueness, and now we're seeing that uh, the the trend is for them to become a, a separate a separate country. And I, I think that uh, the problems that they have been having uh, in trying to maintain their cultural identity that those would be the sorts of problems that Puerto Rico would face if it were incorporated into into the into the U.S. If Puerto Rico were to choose independence for itself. It seems to me that that is a choice that Americans would respect as consistent with the traditions and history of our own country. I personally would not feel either threatened or, or upset if, if that cultural uh, uniqueness, the, the cultural differences were, were given 
let's say, political um, um, standing, that, that, that Puerto Rico would become another nation. I, I personally find that, uh, find that to be a rather exciting prospect. One could envision that relations between an independent Puerto Rico and the United States in the future would be better than they are presently because they would be based on equality and mutual respect, not on subordination and dependence. Yo creo que todo ciudadano tiene el potencial de convertirse en patriota. Me parece que un patriota no es nada más ni nada menos que una persona que piensa que los pueblos son como las personas, que le llega un momento de madurez y hacerse cargo de su propia vida. Los pueblos tienen que hacerse cargo de su propio destino y los individuos de ese pueblo tienen que sentirse orgullosos de formar parte de ese pueblo. Eso es un patriota, una persona que se siente orgulloso de ser lo que es y que quiere seguirlo siendo y quiere que sus hijos eh, se puedan encargar de su propio destino.